Hello, and welcome to part two of the Cisco Catalyst Center plug and play discovery demo series. In this demo video, we're going to be talking about using the bootstrap file as an alternative option to using DHCP on your management network in order to have a factory default router or switch automatically discover your Catalyst Center server. Now, the first step in this process is we have to create a text file, which is essentially a configuration snippet of a chunk of configuration that we would put on our device. It's just enough information for it to have a static IP address, a subnet mask, a gateway, and a default route so that it can route out to the rest of the network. And the other part that it needs is a plug and play profile configured with the information about how to reach the Catalyst Center server. And that would include the protocol to use, the IP address or DNS host name, and the TCP port to use for connectivity. Now, as we mentioned in our introduction video, this information needs to be stored in a simple text file that's named one of two host names. The first option is router-confg, not config, but confg. Or the second option is cisco-rtr.cfg. And either of those two file names will work, but we need to create a text file, name it that, and then as our second step, place it in the root of a USB flash drive that's formatted with the FAT file system. This is typically how we would deploy a bootstrap file in a production environment. You might have the device shipped out to a remote site where the network engineer isn't actually there, but they do have a remote person to help with racking and connecting and powering on the device. And we would have that local person plug this USB flash drive into the USB port on the device and then power it on. And it should automatically connect to the network, have a proper IP address, and then be able to reach the Catalyst Center server. There is an alternative method that works as well, and that would be to save the file actually on the internal flash memory of the router or the switch. And that's actually the method I'll be using in this demonstration video because I am geographically remote from the lab where I'll be testing this out, and I don't have someone on site who can actually plug in a USB flash drive for me. But in either case, this will work, and all we need to do then is power on the device, and it will automatically find that file. All right, well, let's start off by looking at the lab topology that we're going to be using for this demonstration. Over on the right side, you'll see that we have not a very complex network, but there are several subnets in play, and there's going to be some routing between the switches and the Catalyst Center server. To begin with, we're going to use the Catalyst 9500-16X switch at the bottom of our uh, lab here, and we're going to be using the Gigabit Ethernet 0-0 management interface for the onboarding and the discovery of Catalyst Center. And I'm doing this just to give a little variety and to show that not only can you do this with in-band in VLANs, but also with the Gigabit Ethernet 0 uh, 0 management interface. Finally, we're going to be communicating with the Catalyst Center server, which is on a separate shared services network and has to be routed to from the local switch where we're going to be discovering Catalyst Center. So let's switch over and take a look at our current environment. On the left, you'll see a text file, and this is the Cisco RTR.CFG file, which has been copied over to the switch in my lab. And you can see that this file is very simple. We have the hostname command, we've established an IP domain name on the switch, and we're configuring a static IP address on the Gigabit Ethernet 0 0 interface. I've enabled IP routing, and I've created a default route that points at the gateway that we'll be using for our IP connectivity. Finally, we're going to create a PNP profile and give it a name. In this case, I'm just calling it DNAC because this is the default used by Catalyst Center. Within that profile, I'm creating a transport that will use HTTP and IP version 4, and I'm telling it what IP address to reach the Catalyst Center server at. Also, an important note here, I have to specify the VRF in this case because I'm using the Gigabit Ethernet 0-0 management interface. If I were using an in-band VLAN like VLAN 1 or 10 or 100, I would not have to specify this VRF because we would probably be using the global routing table. So that's the simple bootstrap configuration file. There's really not much to it. And I'll show you on our switch that it is actually in flash. 
And here you can see I have a new copy of the file in Flash. I also have an older version from previous demonstrations. And if I look at the contents of this file, we'll see that it matches what's in the text file on the left. So, as I mentioned, we need to factory reset the switch now. And this process is going to take quite a bit of time, so we'll fast forward through it as it goes. But there is a simple command that can be run on any modern version of iOS XE, which takes care of all the factory resetting. And that command is PNPA for plug and play agent space service space reset. When we run that command, we'll be prompted to confirm that we actually want to erase the configuration and reload this device. And yes, we do. Uh, one more important point here, I am connecting to this switch from an out-of-band uh, connectivity system using the serial console interface. I'm not SSHing into this device. If I was, I would lose connectivity with it immediately once it uh, erased its configuration and reloaded. So it's important when you're testing plug-and-play discovery that you actually have serial console connectivity to the device so that you can watch the progress uh, look for messages being put in the syslog, and troubleshoot if any problems come up. So we'll kick this off and wait for it to finish. Okay, the device should be done now. And as we were going through the section fast forwarding, we did highlight several of the command line uh, log entries that were put out, and pointing out the ones that were important for you to keep an eye on. But what we'll do is scroll back through these log entries and just spend a minute more talking about them. So let's go up and look for the first one that's of particular interest. And that's this log entry here where we see a PNP file copy was completed. And that file was copied to the PNP info uh, PNP xsvc cert directory. So a file was copied over, but what's important here is to note that we're using the PNP profile named DNAC which was in the configuration bootstrap file that we initially put on the device. We also have the IP address that we're connecting to, and this is our Catalyst Center server at .202.101. And most importantly, we're using TCP port 80. So that means that we're using the unencrypted HTTP protocol, which we talked about initially. That first connection has to be unencrypted because we don't yet have the certificate for the Catalyst Center server installed on this switch. So once that connection is successful, the certificate is downloaded and then installed in the device, and the plug and play agent software will reconnect to Catalyst Center, but this time using the HTTPS protocol. So here we see the log entry that looks very similar to the previous one, showing that we've copied a file down. We're using the same profile and the same uh, Catalyst Center server IP address, and this time we're using TCP port 443. So that tells us that we are using the HTTPS protocol, and this is an encrypted connection. So the device is now talking to Catalyst Center, and the PNP process is done for the most part. If we go over to our Catalyst Center server, and we click on the menu icon in the upper left, then we go down to the provision menu, and we choose plug and play. We'll start off on the Unclaimed Devices tab, and here you can see we've got one unclaimed device sitting in our PNP inventory. It has a host name because that was part of the bootstrap file that we configured initially and put on the device. And we've got the other details like its product ID and serial number, but we also see the static IP address of 172.16.5.250 that we assigned in that bootstrap file. So we know it's using a static IP because we configured it on that device. It didn't get it from DHCP. And we configured a host name, which would not have shown up otherwise. If we hadn't specified the host name in that bootstrap file, the device name would just say switch as a generic uh, device name. So that concludes our demo. Thanks for watching.